Okay, so this type of intermolecular attraction is what's known as dipole-dipole attractions. <clears throat> so if you uh, remember what dipole is from the last chapter. So let's take these molecules first of all. So we could draw this molecule like that, right? So you can use a line or a break in the line to represent carbon. So then this would be a carbon and that's a carbon and that's a carbon. This carbon has four bonds showing, so it has no hydrogens. And these carbons have one bond showing. So they both have three hydrogens, right? So we could draw a molecule like that. So this molecule on the left is a molecule a lot of you are probably familiar with. It's called acetone. So where do you find acetone used at? But you find it used in fingernail polish remover. Um, it's also used in chemistry a lot. It's a very good solvent in chemistry. It dissolves a lot of organic molecules really well. So let's compare these two molecules. So the one on the left, acetone. So first of all, does it have a dipole moment? So if you remember how to figure out if something has a dipole, uh, the first thing you have to do is assign partial charges. Is any molecule in here partial positive or partial negative? And so how do you figure that out? Well, ele oxygen's electronegativity is 3.44, and carbon's is 2.55. So that's a difference of 9, mm, so 0.89. So that's going to be polar covalent bond. So that means then one of the atoms is partial negative and one is partial positive. So which one's going to be partial negative? Well, that's going to be the one that's mostly electronegative. So oxygen's partial negative and carbon's partial positive. <clears throat> and then the other carbons are not partial positive, right? Because there's not a... So in this case, two carbons attached to each other, same electronegativity. So, so this carbon is not partial positive and the hydrogens are not... They're both, they're all attached to carbon. And so difference in electronegativity between C and H is 0.35, which is below the threshold for a polar covalent bond. So, so non-polar covalent bonds. So that carbon and the hydrogens are not partial positive. The only thing partial positive and negative in this molecule is the carbon in the middle and the oxygen that it's attached to. Okay, so does the molecule have a dipole? And the answer is yes, it does. What is the direction of that dipole? It's straight up, right? From positive to negative. So how about the other molecule? So if we have the other molecule, all right, so all bonds, or either CC bond, so nonpolar, or CH bonds. So they're all nonpolar. So no partial positive or partial negative in that molecule. All right, so this molecule basically essentially has zero net dipole. So acetone has a dipole, the molecule on the right does not have a dipole. Okay, so. So acetone is a liquid, it's got a boiling point of 56 degrees Celsius. <clears throat> so if two molecules <clears throat> of acetone found each other in solution, <clears throat> how would they orientate themselves with respect to each other? So if you had two acetone molecules, so this is partial negative, that's partial positive, <clears throat> would you expect them to orientate themselves like that? <clears throat> or would you expect them to orientate themselves maybe like this? And the answer is no, you would not expect that because you would have electron, electron repulsion. <clears throat> right, electron, electron repulsion there as well. 
So two molecules of acetone, <clears throat> how would they orientate themselves in solution? They would prefer to orientate themselves right like that because then the partial negative of one molecule <clears throat> is near the partial positive of another molecule. So that's an That's another electrostatic attraction, just like an induced dipole. Induced dipole is an electrostatic attraction. But this electrostatic attraction is called a dipole-dipole attraction. Right? Why is it called that? So acetone has a dipole, right? In that direction, in that direction. So molecules with dipoles tend to align their dipoles. So when two molecules become near each other in solution or solid state, or if they found each other in the gas phase, then they would tend to align their dipoles because that puts the positive of one molecule near the partial, puts the partial positive of one molecule near the partial negative of the other molecule. And so how often does, how often does this molecule have a dipole? Well, 100% of the time, right? Acetone always has a dipole because carbon is always partial positive, oxygen is partial negative, so two molecules of acetone are always attracted to each other. Whereas with molecules that have induced dipoles, like in the previous lecture, when the two F2 molecules bounced off of each other, for example, then what happens to their electron density? It goes back to being symmetrical and they have no dipole anymore and now there's no attraction to each other. So molecules that have induced dipoles only have an induced dipole when they come close together in space and their electron densities perturb each other. And once they bounce off of each other, there's no dipole anymore, so they're not inherently attracted to each other. <clears throat> but two molecules of acetone or two molecules that have a dipole are attracted to each other 100% of the time. And this other molecule, since it doesn't have a dipole, So there's no dipole-dipole attraction. Right? But it would have van der Waals attractions, right? All molecules have van der Waals attractions because when two molecules get close to each other, if you remember how to sketch van der Waals attractions, just perturb the electron density, right? Draw a little blob with a non-symmetrical electron density. Right, but that's, those molecules only have an, so then they have an induced dipole. Right, when they're close in space. So they're only attracted to do each other when they're close in space. When they're not in close in space, there's no attraction to, to each other. They only happen to be attracted when they bump into each other. And those attractions are much weaker. So the acetone's permanent dipole always attracted to, to each other is much stronger. And this is reflected in the boiling points of the molecule. Right, acetone's boiling point again is 56 degrees Celsius. And this molecule's boiling point is negative 6.9 degrees Celsius. So it's a gas, not very attracted to each other. And this molecule is a liquid much more attracted to each other. So in order to acetone to boil to get this molecule into the gas phase, you have to break those attractions and then a single molecule of acetone can escape into the gas phase.
Okay, so if we took another example, so if we took a molecule of HCl, right, does it have a dipole? And the answer is yes, it does, because chlorine is partial negative and hydrogen is partial positive, right? Because chlorine is a lot more electronegative than hydrogen. So its dipole would be in that direction. So if you had another molecule of acetone, how would they orientate themselves with each other? Would they orientate like that? And the answer is no, because the two negative ends don't want to be near each other. Right, would they orientate themselves like this? And the answer is no. Because two positives don't want to be next to each other. Two negatives don't want to be next to each other. So two molecules of acetone would be attracted to each other. And they would orientate themselves like that so that the partial negative of one molecule would be near the partial negative of the other molecule. And so again, the dipoles are aligned. And that's a dipole. Dipole attraction. Okay, so that's dipole-dipole attraction.